Hey guys, uh, hope everyone's doing well. This is uh, Skara here. Um, so what I'm actually going to be doing in this tutorial is I'm hoping to make actually all of these video tutorials a bit of a, a bit of a kind of series really um, for you guys to watch. Um, and it's going to be on how to produce uh, the kind of commercial sort of house tracks you hear uh, on the radio nowadays. So things like Scala and Shift Key, um, you're probably going to get that sort of feeling when I play this uh, little track to you. Um, so what I've done here is um, I've just made a little intro um, to something like a yeah as I say a commercial pop track um, and I'm hoping um, in this series to kind of teach you all the little segments and then right at the end I'm going to teach you how to arrange it all and some final touch up as well um, so yeah without further ado I'm just going to play this um, to you guys so you can hear exactly what I've done and then I'll go through and show you how I did it Okay, so um, what you probably gather from that is it's extremely basic and I know it's just the intro, um, but obviously just for this part, I just want to kind of go over just some of the intro elements and, um, and then obviously I'll progress it into the drop in later videos. Um, but anyway, let's start with these chords here. So what I'm actually doing is, um, now these are very, very basic chords. Um, there's just the bass note here so we've got so yeah um, and then basically all I do from there is I just start dragging notes up like that um, just to uh, to just kind of build the chords out a little bit but there's really only just kind of bass notes here um, what's important here is there's a little melody um, and uh, that's what's really making the chord progression quite interesting so in terms of uh, processing that's on this, so I've just got a bit of Pro Q3 here. So I'm just taking it, a little bit of the bass out there, not too much. I still want a little bit of bass in the chords. Um, normally what I do is I just drag it out to around there, just past 100 hertz, and um, that would take out pretty much all of the sub. But for this, I wanted to keep it around there just I'm just kind of using the theory of if it sounds good, it is good. Um, and I felt like that was a little bit too much, so I'm just leaving it there. Um, and I've also taken a little bit of the highs off as well there, um, just to leave room for the vocals. There will be vocals um, coming in uh, around about here. Um, so you want to leave a bit of space for those. So for the bass guys, simply what I'm doing is Let's go here. See, they're just following the root note of the chords. I'm just dragging out, deleting that, and then dragging the note out so it follows the root note of the chords. They're not playing the same rhythm. Okay. Very, very simple. Um, for the bass sound, I've just got this sound here. Quite a nice gritty kind of sound to have in your low end. Now for the processing, guys, there's no reason for you to put your sub bass in stereo. So I always make my mono, and that's what I'm doing here with this stereo imaging plugin, or sorry, direction mixer. Um, and I'm just pulling it in like that, making it completely mono so it sounds good in the mix. EQ, taking off some of the highs there. A bit of multi-band compression here. Just make sure it sounds good. Again, in the mix, just compressing the low end. I don't want to compress anything else, so... Yeah, just about 5 dB there of compression. And, of course, my trusty kickstart here to um, make sure it's not colliding with our kick. 
Um, for the cords as well, you probably want to put some side chain on them, uh, just uh, in minimal amounts. Don't have to side chain it all the way, probably around 85%, something like that. Now, moving on to this layer. Now, this is really, really important. So, what I have here is basically an ambience loop. Now, this is just, this is really, really important. Before um, hand, I never used ambience loops and my tracks sounded like they were missing something. And essentially all it is, it's just a, an ambience loop is really just, I mean, this sounds more like a pad, if I'm being honest, this is just a pad. And um, it's just playing some chords there. It doesn't change. Just make sure it's in key with the song. Um, but this is really, really important, guys. Um, Add this to your track. Search ambient loops um, on Splice, or if you've got a sample, you know, sort of load of sample packs. I'm sure there'll be um, an ambience folder. But make sure you add them in because they um, they really do add a lot to your tracks. Um, then we've got a clap, pretty standard stuff. I'm just bringing in the elements gradually here. You can probably visually see that as well. Um, it's really important not to just play all your cards at the at the, um, at the start of the track. You want to bring in elements gradually. Uh, We've got that kick there that I used. Now, what I've actually done is taken off all the high end of this. And um, what that does is actually really, really gives a um, a cool kind of heartbeat sound to it. So you can hear that here. If I take it off, it's way too clicky. You don't need that, um, especially for the intro. You want to keep it really, really subtle. Um, but it just really progresses the track nicely and gives um, gives some good rhythm elements at the start. You wanna you don't really wanna um, let's say slack off with the um, with the drums, especially even at the start of the track, because you want to have something. I mean, the idea with this is it's electronic dance music, guys. So you want to have some rhythm at the start to get the movement going. That's really really important. And I see so many people where they'll just, you know, literally just continue that out for ages. And constantly I'm just thinking, where's the rhythm? You know, there's no rhythm. Um, so it may be personal preference, but if I'm being honest, guys, with EDM, you really want to keep the rhythm going from the start. So down here, we just have some effects. Now, these are just to engage the next part of the track. So we've got a little symbol here. Standard stuff and uh, just an impact at the end here, and that's obviously where the um, break will happen or the uh, build up. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the intro, guys. So it's really, 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 really simple. And the the main thing I want you guys to understand about, especially when producing this kind of music, is it's it's generally very, very simple. If you listen to it and you listen very closely, you can tell that there's um not. I wouldn't say you know basic production because getting these elements to sound right is a whole another story but putting the elements in that you need you don't need to fill it out with sounds that don't need to be there um, so just use your ears use reference tracks and I guarantee if you're paying close enough attention you can learn a lot just from doing that I never went to a production school I simply just learned from YouTube videos like this one and uh, that's really why I'm doing this video tutorial today to give something back and to show kind of really what I've learned throughout other people's tutorials as well. So, guys, if you enjoyed the video, um, please follow me on Instagram. Um, subscribe to this YouTube channel, most importantly, if you want to see more tutorials like this. Um, but, yeah, I wish you guys a good rest of your day. And look out for part two. I should, I should be getting it out in the next week. So we're going to focus on the build-up and the drop. Um, so that will be really, really interesting. I hope you guys are excited for that. But until then, I bid you farewell. Take care, guys.